Hi. Can you hear me? Hi, Faith. Hi, how are you? Fine, fine. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, I'm trying to, to set up my lighting. That's okay. I'm visible. Yeah. But uh, okay, Sawa, just give me one minute. So it's recording, eh? Don't start the recording first. We are live. Give me a minute to just set my Wi-Fi so that it doesn't disturb us. Let me know, let me know guys, you're welcome. Let me know for those who've joined. If we are, um, you can hear me, just comment. Let me welcome, welcome Frida, welcome Caro. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank, from Israel. Oh, Caro, you're such a supporter. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, Yvette. Asante Sana. Um, Jacqueline, Karibu, Karibu. So I decided to go live earlier, like 10 minutes early. So that um, so, so that I can now uh, be able to wait for you guys. Mm -hmm. So if you join us, kindly comment. Also, if you have a pressing question, kindly start putting them down and um, I'll be glad to answer to your questions. Yes, you will be learning a lot today, Karimi, Asante Sana. And um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy you're here. So let's just wait a bit. We'll be starting at around 6.05 because you know Kenyans, sisi ni Kenyans, kuna watu wako hapa si Kenyans who joined us, yeah? So please feel welcome.
and and you can say hi to those who've joined in already hi everyone so just say hi My at least you are welcome <laughs> let's also test your your voice yeah Can you hear Anne, guys? Please comment if you can hear her. I hope they heard me. Can you hear Anne, Yvette, kindly? Let me know if you can hear Anne. Anne, kindly, just say something. Good evening. Did they hear me? And, and uh, if Lynn says she can hear you, so I think we are good. Okay, that's good. Thanks, Millicent. Asante, Asante. You can move a bit to the center. So oh, you've gone away, you've gone away, yes, yes. Oh, have I? Is okay. that okay? That's okay. No, you're okay now. It's okay now.
we are about to go we are about to go to start thanks caroline murioki i am inaudible i am i had muted before let me know if it's okay now frida Oh, just as Karibu sana, Asante, Asante. In fact, I need more men. Kindly, if you can call those men, I need them. I need more men here. Share with your better halves, with your brothers, with your cousins, your colleagues, acquaintances. Kindly let them join. I need them here. Thanks, just as Asante, Asante. Karibu sana. Okay, thanks Frida. Asante for communicating. Very important. Um, so we'll be starting soon, 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 soon. Sisi mm, Kenya, you know. We'll be starting soon, so we can, uh, being a Saturday, we can have time for our loved ones. Oh. Hi, Caro, Asante, Caro Macharia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are good. And I'm glad you're here, Karibu. Yeah, kindly, if you join us, please, please, please. Eh, tuambie umengia. Feli, Asante sana. Glad to see you too. Aida Asante, Asante, I can see that you're live already. So we'll be starting in the next few. Um, good evening, good evening, Kama Asante, Karibu Sana, and you're just right on time. So uh we are going to be we're going to start we're going to start uh, um tuned in kawera thank you jay murray asante karibuni please yes i said i need more men here I said I need more men. Asante sana Kamau for joining in. Please call them, call them for us. We need them. I believe Anne is, Anne is smiling because she knows what exactly I mean. Eh? Uh, so guys, Aubrey, Aubrey, Asante Baba, Asante. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo. Karibu sana, Dennis. Thank you, thank you. My support system, eh? Asante sana. Thank you so much. And most welcome. Um... So I'm going to call this live to start, guys. And I wish to welcome you to this channel. Most welcome. And for those who are here for the first time, my name is Faith Kaimba. And uh, I do this channel under Faith, the organizer, who is here talking to you today, having a very important topic for you. And I wish to ask that if you've not subscribed kindly consider subscribing because you know we have hot 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 topics for you and um would not want you to miss them out and uh that's why it's important to uh it's, it's important to, to 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 subscribe and hit that notification bell so you do not miss out on any of our lives any of our videos 
when we upload them. Uh, so I'll go on one um, uh, on one uh, screen, and this is our outline for today, as you can see. So uh, I hope uh, you are able to to see the screen and. Um, this is what we are going to be doing today. If you have something that we are not handling, we have not scheduled in handling it for you, uh, kindly comment down below and let me know. Otherwise, Kariboni Sana. Hoarding. Hoarding guy. Hoarding. Is it hoarding? Hoarding. Or what do you call it? Yeah. Uh, so... I want to introduce the topic. What is hoarding? Hoarding definitely is our is 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 when someone acquires or um, buys or um, accumulates things that they do not need or use over a period of time, collecting, you know, uh, and those items you do not use them you just keep them you do not need them you do not use them i'm trying to do it in a layman's language and um sometimes uh some of us uh, accumulate this stuff over time and uh, for specific reasons um they could be of monetary high monetary value or even very useless items so that is holding and these items, Zinakua, they become so many over time. So, guys, hoarding as a, has been recognized. Um, most people are hoarders, country or actually worldwide. It over a population on a population of um, about five percent of our population are hoarders. Can you imagine what that means? Yeah. So, like, if we were talking about 40 million Kenyans, 5% uh, of them are um, hoarders. So, you can imagine, you can ask yourself where you fall, yeah? You can ask yourself where you fall. Even it is worldwide. In the States, it's millions of people that have, uh, are hoarders. And um, I must admit that... Um, to become a hoarder, sometimes you do not realize you're becoming a hoarder. However, with time, maybe somebody can mention to you or uh, maybe you yourself, uh, maybe when you visit someone who does not have much, then maybe you can realize or not even probably wonder why they don't have. Um, I'll give you... Um, some uh, uh, the fact that uh, you can be how you, you you become a hoarder, you can be an impulsive acquirer, yeah, always acquiring things all the time. And most hoarders, how they accumulate stuff is through shopping. So you end up you shop 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 shop. You go out doing something. You've gone for a specific thing, but you find yourself shopping. Yeah, just because maybe you feel you like that item or maybe it's in fashion or probably somebody mentioned it to you or you saw it at someone's house and you end up uh, buying, not because you need it, but because of other reasons. Yeah, so you find yourself accumulating those things um, over time and those things become uh, clutter to your life. You could also be a worried keeper. All the time you wonder, hey, hmm, am I keeping the right thing? Um, uh, do I have the right things that I need to have? Yeah, you're a worried keeper. Yeah. And like I said, under statistics, most guys, most people become holders even without knowledge, without them knowing they have become holders. Yeah. So when you accumulate things over a, a certain period of time and you accumulate even similar things to some extent, many things that you, you will not need, then 
categorize yourself as a hoarder. So who is liable? Who is liable? I must admit that uh, out of the people who are hoarders, most, most of them are men. And hoarding begins at the age of about 13 years old. And by around 15 years, you are able to tell if your child is a hoarder or not. So if you have teenagers or preteens, kindly check them, check, observe their, their habits so that you are able to know uh, what kind of um, person they are growing or they are uh, becoming every other day. If they are these people who keep on collecting, you know, two small things, things that do not even sometimes make sense, um, then kindly uh, have th those are questions, those are uh, alerts that you need to be checking on uh, on uh, frequently, preteens and teens. And out of these people who are hoarders, most are, mostly are men. And just look even in your own house, just in your own house, you will find that most men are, are hoarders and they hoard very weird things. Yeah, they hoard them and even they do not use them over a long period of time, even years, starting with a garage because that is their special place. They go to the garage and they have changed um they have changed they have decided that their tires are now old for example so you can imagine four tires change yeah? and they are, those tires are removed so what happens is that instead instead of trying to uh sell what they have removed they carry them home another year or two years or three years they bring another set of four yeah, I know there are so many of you here who can, who can, you can comment and let me know if it is true or not. You have so many garage or probably car spares, car spare parts in your houses, even in your bedrooms. Yeah, in the stores, the stores have changed to be garages in your homes. Yeah, because uh, men, we don't want to let go even of things that we are not using. Yeah. You remove a spare part that is faulty and you still want to keep it. Surely, where are you taking it? Where are you taking that spare part? It's faulty. If, for example, maybe you've been uh, uh, taken, taken to a point of maybe purchasing a spare part and you end up, uh, maybe they're saying uh, you must buy a pair and you just need one, then it's okay to keep the other part because it's in good condition. But really, you've removed a spare part it's faulty it cannot be used and you're still doing what you're still keeping it yeah so who is liable we are all liable however the men in the house guys kindly let's reduce let's reduce because hoarding can end up being something else it can end up being uh something else which we are going to be hearing from an from an and uh, for this purpose um I want to ask that uh, we start looking into our inner selves. What satisfaction do we get? What satisfaction do we get once we see those items there? Yeah, start asking yourself that question. I'll tell you why I'm telling you that. Uh, are you satisfied once you see all those items in your house? How does, how do you feel, yeah? When your house is full of stuff, yeah? how do you feel where does it uh, get you uh, to and um people i'm going to take you through on the reasons as to why people hoard generally uh people hoard for various and specific reasons it could be genetic um maybe your parents or probably you grew up seeing yeah uh somebody who is a hoarder and people keeping things and these things could vary from all the way from a simple receipt from the supermarket yeah somebody's laughing because they know that it what i'm saying is true that it could be receipts from the supermarket it could be it could be books exercise books guys exercise books mtoto alienda shule 
eh, your child is in class eight and you have exercise books for uh play play can you imagine how many books you have in your house and you're keeping them yeah for memories for memories keep a simple text uh a, a simple past paper or probably an exam or maybe even a report card yeah you don't need to keep all those exercise books you are hoarding you are hoarding shopping bags we are hoarders thank god to the to the government of kenya for banning uh polythene because those who are disaster in our houses total total disaster at least for now uh people have tried however uh, i've been to houses and i have found this to be a very a very um critical it's 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 all over it's common in most houses uh shopping bags and some even do not know whether they have so much until you declutter that's when you know how much shopping bags you you have so it clutter or hoarding can be you can hoard anything anything from shoes handbags clothes anything anything and uh, for those who are joining in you're most welcome um so it could be a behavior land so you might probably be admiring because like our children they tend to they tend to feel like we are no more and they tend to you know monkey see monkey do so they start uh, collecting to v2 to, uh, to toys to meet it to what and those weird habits please monitor them uh it could be exposure to past events uh maybe you have been exposed to lacking yeah like you've not had maybe say there's a time maybe you missed um like i was an i had an encounter uh with a client who you had previously missed having a, a sanitary pad and um she had that fear fear to to lack sanitary pads so the day she had the opportunity of getting those things i'm telling you she bought and bought and bought until the time we were decluttering um we had to we had we had we had to throw away some because they also have expiry dates there were so 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 many so it could be as a result of luck maybe you've been exposed to not having something like for example ujagro maybe ukiwa na ukiwa na let's say shoes and the moment you have an opportunity to buy shoes my friend eh you hit it the way you want it and uh, it could be also be exposure to trauma maybe you have been exposed uh, to something bad maybe a fire that burnt all your things and now you feel like this is the time now to keep because i might need them later i don't know what might happen now yeah maybe to death yeah and you feel like maybe uh let's say you've lost a relative or somebody who is close to you and um you want uh, they have left some stuff for you but those things you do not need them so you keep on keeping and keeping and keeping yeah so that is another reason as to why people hurt and the other reason is sentimental value you could be having something that uh, maybe you've been gifted something by people and it's getting hard it's hard for you to let go yeah so discarding is an issue and you know if you you are you cannot discard or probably give away or donate remember we are doing like this we are going up we are holding yeah it's up the ladder up 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 and the levels go up 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 and they get to a point whereby uh now you need um uh and now you now you need help so even gifts even gifts it depends you can imagine if you receive a gift every day yeah toys nini nini at because it was a gift uh because your child got a gift when they were one year old you do not want to give it out and that toy is even it's worn out it's completely broken it's not even in use you still want to keep it yeah you still want to keep it broken toys yeah just because you were given sentimental value okay intrinsic value uh if probably maybe that thing makes you happy 
it makes you feel joy then you might probably be meant to, you might find yourself hoarding such stuff and you know there are so many things that can spark joy in our lives especially in our houses in our offices where the hoarding is all across could be in the at you at home in the office in your shops eh? shops especially those people who have shops and don't want to let go of items that you bought 10 years ago this is the time to do a sale this is the time to do giveaways yeah you are hoarding you're hoarding doesn't matter they are for sale you're hoarding them yeah and then uh, it could also be an uh, expectation to use at a later date. Unat, you want to keep this item, you are expecting to use, but expecting it will never get there. It, you will never get to use them. Yeah, You're just expecting, but you never get, even years and years, come, year, come, go. Haifiki, you don't get there. Yeah, Lack of knowledge to give. I met a client who told me, that um they have never known that they can give they have never known that giving is a habit that one should have so for her she would keep and keep go shopping and keep yeah even ungas which expire in a month or two and somebody brings and keep yeah you end up happy having expired items having and and most holders maybe they don't remember to check some of these uh important uh, uh items like expiry dates on on items so you end up using expired uh things uh, in cooking in eat, eating yeah and it, it's crazy it's crazy across so those are some of the reasons as to why people hurt maybe you can add others uh, that probably you think are there. And I'm going to take you through the levels of holding so you can know where you are. So you may know where you are, where you place yourself because um, there are levels. And those levels start from below there and they go up, up, up. If you're on level one, be rest assured. If you don't work on it, you're going to level two and three and four and five. So let's, 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 uh, uh, put our minds clear and ask ourselves uh, what level are we in so in level one you will find that doors windows stairs any pathway or places you you can access them although they still stuff in there like for example you might find a closet can close yeah but if you open it my friend huh eh? Ha, 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 ha. It's a uh, mambo eco. It's starting to build up. So if you're opening your closet and when you look at your closet, you can't see much. You cannot view your stuff and be able to tell this is that, that is that. You're starting to hold. You're starting to become an hoarder. Okay? A hoarder. On level two, clutter has begun blocking pathways, living areas, and it's visible. Like the moment I come to your house, I can be able to analyze what kind of person you are from the word go. I can be able to tell what you hold more than the other. And this is where I am at an angle, an eye angle. I'm able to see what is blocking your, your, your spaces, especially uh, the common areas, your corridors, your balconies. You know, uh, I can be able to tell so kindly check let me know if you're on level one or level two comment down below and um we are going to learn and we are helping ourselves as we continue and on level three uh visible clutter clutter is completely visible even outside the home yani the moment i ring your bell before even i ring your bell i know you're a hoarder and why so even for those who have their own homes where they are staying uh, on compound. When I come outside, when you're going home, like outside, even when people are passing, you start seeing items outside the gate. And these items could be building materials. You finished building like uh, three years, four years ago. You're still possessing some uh, meaty, some uh, 
red soil, some sun, some uh, cocoto. Yeah, I know now it's ringing a bell. Yes, you're hoarding because you're not going to use these items, and they can bring in a coin or two at that particular time which you can use you don't need to hold if you need it another day then you can you can always get the exact amount that you need instead of uh keeping it keeping it there i don't know whether you're getting this picture when you're going to ring somebody's bell uh outside their compound and the first thing you you get into you see is uh remains of building materials yeah Makaratasi, ata makaratasi, ya cement, yes, such stuff. And uh, even on your balconies, ukienda kwa balcony, you will find, um, uh, you will find, uh, you will find a lot of things like uh, uh, chupa za mafuta, you're holding chupa za mafuta, oh my God. Bluebird containers, na you always keep saying, I will throw this. Then one day you, you 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 come and you see them all there. Yeah? And those things are building up. Remember, it's up, up, up the level. And the moment your common areas are filled up, do you know where you go into? You go into your living spaces, where you sleep, where you study, your beds, your underbeds, your closets, your, um, your study tables, yeah? And to some extent, even your toilets. Unapata, you have storage in your toilet. My friend, please, please, please check out, check out. These are alerts. Eh? These are, these are uh, things that uh, should be ringing a bell and you should be asking yourself questions. So if you have those things uh, and when you go out, you're seeing uh, most of these items um, at an angle, at an eye level, then know that something is happening. Yeah, level four, <laughs> food is rotting in the pantry, my friend. Food is rotting in your fridges. Yeah, when you go there and you find hauna, uh, there's nothing you can make a meal with. It's all rotten. Yeah, it's all expired in the pantry. Yeah, you're holding and you're still buying. Remember, end month, you still feel you need to shop. You're still buying. And things have started rotting yeah so what happens smells have started coming out yeah you start feeling okay but for them at level four it's getting now crazy it's getting crazy and it's becoming something else so for them they do not feel it and um it, this is the time to start the, your friends stop visiting you and uh, if somebody is brave enough maybe they will tell you maybe they will help you to clean out but if you are at a level of getting help then you take it negatively then you take it negatively at level five by the way at level four it's now completely hard for you to find things if you need an item you will be you you will be surprised that you will not find it if you need probably to look for your sports bra when you decide to start doing exercise, how taipata, you will not find it because you do not even have an idea of where it could be. And you can imagine even if you had the idea, things are piled up on top of it. So it's very hard for you to find it. At level five, it's extreme clutter. Extreme, extreme. Dead animals. Tu vitu tumekufa kufa hapa na pale tupanya nini nini. Yeah, because now it gets to a level even of no hygiene. Yeah, no hygiene completely. Auna, if you really, you have all those things in your house, how do you even clean? Yeah, so there is poop and sanitary conditions. Unapata, um, even if you have a kid, they poop, they poop somewhere or probably pee somewhere. You do not even have that time. Yeah, you do not have that time to you do not have that time to clean up or to to clean after them so it becomes um the conditions in your house are completely at another level and on this level four level five this is what her Anne will be handling today and uh, because of that i'm going to take you through the warning signs so that i can invite Anne. 
and uh, the warning signs things to watch out for if it's hard to clean surfaces for you yeah you cannot clean uh, even under the seats you can not even under the seats even where you're stepping yeah where you put you place your stuff you cannot even move a fridge or a cooker because there is no space it's filled up yeah it's hard to clean so that means that that place really will be smelling in a few days and then there's distress there's anger and finally you get depressed yeah uh and you get into depression those are warning signs unapata how una peace yeah how una peace i've handled i if you've not watched my 10 habits to maintaining an organized home kindly do watch it because most of those habits i've mentioned there or tip or um are mainly for you to be able they will assist you to be able to reduce on uh, hoarding and keeping things that you do not need please make sure you watch that video because it it will really enlighten you and um health and safety so this is where you will find even a fire can break out yeah you will find that you can fall you can hurt yourself children can hurt themselves when they are playing with the with broken things yeah so it's crazy those are warning signs if you realize that these things are happening to you please question marks question marks and um, it's hard to find stuff very hard for you to find stuff so i'm going to uh slowly discuss uh, just on a small uh level uh hoarding as a disorder and this is where level four and level five has i uh, will take you to hoarding as a disorder and i know you could be asking whether you are messy or whether messiness is hoarding i must different let me differentiate the two so if you have hd hoarding disorder by the way um hoarding disorder is uh has already been uh, categorized on its own as a disorder on its own it's no longer and uh ocd it's it's a disorder it's it's it, people are doing research completely on it so for you to be able to know whether you, it, you are you have a disorder of hoarding or you're just messy if you're messy you are probably lazy or maybe you do not uh, put stuff away or um, you don't like cleaning yeah and if you're a hoarder the difference between uh the, the hoarding disorder and messiness is that if you are messy you will agree for me to be able to give you help like you can come to your house and they tell you ah let's let's do this and you'll be happy to do it but if you have a disorder my friend that is the time you kick me out of your house because those things are of so much importance to your life you feel your receipts for 20 2000 are important to your life so the moment i start decluttering your house when you have not reached at a level of health then it becomes very 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 difficult and that is the time people end up being depressed so it's 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 very easy for you to know whether you're messy or you have a hoarding disorder i hope i am clear on that for messiness it's easy for you to receive help in fact you are glad and you are happy somebody is coming to your rescue however if you have a disorder you feel that somebody is entering into your space by force and you don't like it i don't know whether you've watched some of hoarding habits whereby somebody came and found their house had been cleaned out completely and they were at a depression in fact they had to be taken to a hospital to for therapy because it was crazy 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 they were even crying like children they value those things so you end up valuing things that you think that are not even they don't make sense at all at all and um, if you have the mentioned uh, warning signs then it's time to seek more information about uh holding disorder it's time to look for support systems for people to help you if you have uh, somebody you know who is a hoarder in your family, your sister or your cousin, 
usiwaende with force. Don't go with force to them. Just approach them pole 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 pole. Tell them to watch even videos of hoarding of before and after how people took it. Don't go directly. Yeah. Just because you've realized now that you are you're knowledgeable of the levels of hoarding, you start now, you know, uh, going for those people. No, 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 no. It has to be step by step. But then the solution for somebody who has a hoarding disorder is not cleaning out. It is not cleaning out. That is the last stage of uh, a hoarder. Get expert opinion and advice. And that is where I'm going to invite Anne. And if you get to the level of, uh, of, of appreciating that you have agreeing that you have an issue or a disorder then you can hire an organizer like me and a cleaner to be able to put you in the right place and uh that is where we begin guys so i'm going to welcome Anne. i'm going to welcome Anne to come and uh take it up from there and address the issues of hoarding as a disorder and uh, about uh, mental wellness what it does she's going to give us all those details if you have questions for Anne, kindly uh, put them down here. I'm going to put them across to her. And uh, also, I want to mention that if hoarding grows with age, so if you're a hoarder at 30, know that if you don't address it, you're going to be a hoarder at 50 and 70. And this should be ringing a bell to your parents. Yeah? What kind of parents do we have? Are they hoarding? because it tends to grow with age, yeah? Kumbuka iyo, when I come back to you. So, Anne, you're most welcome. Karibu Thank you, sana. Kind yes, of take it up. I hope I am audible enough. You can confirm, eh? Yes. Great, so good evening, everybody. Um. I'm glad to take part in this very interesting topic and I keep asking myself if I am a holder. Um, I think I have a few characteristics here and there, but probably I haven't reached the levels that uh, Faith has told us about, but it's good we ask, it's important that we ask ourselves these questions, what levels we are, we are at. So how does holding begin? And uh, I know Faith has mentioned that, but I'll also emphasize it. And then we will see how that affects our health, more specifically our mental health, but it does affect even our physical health. So we all probably have clutter in our spaces. The physical space in your house or the physical space in your office or uh, at your workplace. And Holding just begins by, by, by gathering clutter. And clutter is when you have unnecessary stuff around you that you're not using, but we perceive it as very important. Like Faith was mentioning, sometimes we pile up um, uh, supermarket receipts or shopping receipts. You have exercise books for your children who went to primary school 15 years ago. Now they are teenagers and they're still keeping their books. Mm -hmm. We hold things because sometimes we tend to perceive that they have got a sentimental value, which is equally true. You hold on to something because it means something to you, but you need to keep asking yourself a question. If I let go of this item at this point in time, what does it, what, what will I lose? If I continue keeping it, is it of any value to me? If I get, if I, if I let go of that item, in the near future, am I going to need it or will I be able to acquire it? Those are questions that we should be asking ourselves. Faith also did mention that uh, holding begins around adolescence and it's because at that time, children are learning by observing us. So the parents have become holders and your child also learns to, you know, cling on to things that you're buying them, the clothes that you're buying them. But at this point, I want you to reflect um uh, just look at the space where you are at right now where you're watching us from maybe you're in the house or 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 you're in the car driving or you're just seated somewhere and just reflect 
I believe majority of the people who are viewing as faith are people who are relatively stable in terms of having an income at the end of the month or are, or are in business. So they're not people who are really struggling. And I will explain why I am saying this. So if you can just flash back to when you were growing up, 30, 40 years ago or 20 years ago, if you're at 20-something watching, you probably grew up in an environment where your parents did not provide everything. And it's because they lacked, themselves they lacked. So you, you grew up in an environment whereby uh, you did not have access to everything. Then 10 years, 20 years down the line, you have a job and you're not living in your own place or you are, if you're lucky, you are even, you even set up a home, you built your home. And all along you kept saying, um, you know, I'm breaking the generational curse. We call them generational curses of poverty. And I am going to acquire this and acquire this and acquire this. And unconsciously, we now find ourselves buying things, compensating for what we lacked years back. So that buying is unconscious. The stuff is good. It's, 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 it's helping you at some point. It's helping your family members. It's helping people when, uh, you know, when you have visitors. But you're just acquiring more and more, more and more, more and more unconsciously until your house is full. You've not even reached those uh, crazy levels that we have seen, but you probably have, uh, maybe there's a cupboard or a ward, I don't know, do I call it a wardrobe or what do we call them? Those things that are in the sitting room and that's where you have your TV. You have an entertainment unit. Let me call it an entertainment unit that has a set of very nice cups, very nice plates and very nice everything. And you probably picked that habit from your mom or from your aunties when you were growing up because they always set aside some stuff uh, that was for use for visitors. You guys would never touch them. I would never touch anything uh, in that cupboard or in that uh, nice wall unit. They were basically reserved for visitors. And we have unconsciously picked that eh? and have over time now acquired very nice things that we keep aside and say these are for our visitors. That is a characteristic of hoarding because you're keeping stuff that you're not using in, in this present uh, moment. You're just anticipating that I'm going to need to use this thing at some point. So over time, that's how you have acquired stuff. Same case to clothes, same case to shoes, as Faith mentioned. But what does this mean to your mental health? When you have clutter all around and uh, so it has accumulated over time, over time, you have moved from level one to level two. Clutter, by the way, is not holding. Let me clarify that. But clutter is a sign of holding because the more you continue to accumulate, then the more you become, the more you're holding on to stuff. And how to recognize that you're a holder, you actually get very anxious anytime you think of letting go of something. You become anxious and you experience a lot of distress and it gives you stress, like proper stress, and you just cannot let go of that item. Okay. So how does that impact on your mental health? First of all, if you have so much clutter around your, your physical space or around your, your, for example, your office desk or even just your home, let's focus to the home part. If you have so much clutter around your home, first of all, you're never in the, in the right frame of mind. You want to look for stuff. It takes hours for you to locate where you placed an item. You have to like go through piles and piles and piles of clothes. Like Faith was saying, you open your closet, the next thing things are falling out. Then you have to like remove everything to locate a certain dress that you want to wear. You have a thousand other dresses, but there's one that you're looking for that you cannot locate because it's piled up somewhere. So already you're getting your day very disorganized. That that brings in the uh the 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 the, the idea of time management. You cannot you can never find your stuff like properly, you're rushing, you want to go to work, and you start getting stressed up. 
from very simple things. You're the one who has piled clutter, clutter, clutter. Things have piled up that you think are important. Finally, you just cannot locate things properly. So you start getting stressed up. So that is one impact that it will have on your mental health. You start getting stressed. You cannot think, you have no clarity at all. The other thing, you even start having conflict with the people who are around you. I'll give an example of us mothers in the house. I know we are several. And we are very good at shouting at our children. Probably we want to go to church by 10 a.m. We should have left the house and gone to church. But nobody seems to locate anything to wear. Nobody seems to locate where you kept the Bible last Sunday, where your pens are. And I can see Faith smiling. You're busy now shouting at your children. Where is this? Where is this? Where is it? And it will bring a lot of conflict. Even in your, you know, the relationship with the people around you. Could be your spouse, could be your children, could be your nannies, could be anyone. So again, now that starts bringing a lot of conflict. When there's conflict, there's no peace. What does that uh, have? And what does that tell your mind? You, your mind is still getting stressed up, stressed up, stressed up. Remember, um, this clutter or this holding could in its it could be in itself a sign of that you're already having a mental health issue a mental health problem remember these mental health issues are not only for people who are in madare or whichever other psychiatric hospitals that we know about but uh the the, the moment that you're keeping things and not letting go that could just be a sign of a, a bigger problem or it could be a beginning of a problem so i could for example be having anxiety could be suffering from an anxiety disorder. And for me, how I cope with that anxiety disorder is by, you know, not letting go of stuff. So I'm having stuff around me, sort of to give me consolation or something, you know. I seek comfort from keeping things. So I'm already having a mental issue, like I have mentioned, maybe an anxiety problem. And then because uh, over time, I have developed, you know, some own coping mechanism. One of the coping mechanisms could be just me putting things, keeping things, sentimental things, anything that I feel is going to be important. For me, that acts as, I'm giving an example, that may act as, a, you know, how you cope with your anxiety. But it could also be that you're keeping things um, and, you know, with time you start developing mental issues, like Faith mentioned, you could develop depression because the more you keep things and you're unable to let go, people now start keeping away from you. You cannot share, you know, you're sharing your problems with your clutter, with your pile of books, with your pile of clothes. Isn't this who I'm now a story in Azo, you know, thinking that those are the things that are going to help you. So, yes, that is what clutter is and that is what, it, that is what uh, can build up to holding. And just remember, uh, we may not really classify ourselves as holders, but if you're having a problem or anytime you you want to let go of something that you have really held on to for a long time and you feel so distressed, then that means you could be becoming, you could be, you know, in the stages of becoming a holder. And that is when you need to seek help. And seeking help basically means just getting somebody whom you can talk to and, you know, someone who can genuinely tell you, you know, I think um, you keeping these things, uh, this is where your problem is. Can we begin probably by rearranging your space, letting go of things that we know are not going to be of help, you know? It does not really, you don't have to get to the point of actually sitting down with a psychotherapist you know, with a psychologist or a psychotherapist or a counselor, but it could get to that point. But the levels, the initial levels, level one, two, three, those are things that you can actually manage so that you avoid then the risk of getting into the other levels where you actually require professional, um, professional help. So there are a few things here and there that you can do that are going to help um, clutter your space and by cluttering your space then you're also cluttering your mind you're like freeing up your mind to be able to make decisions people who 
um, you know, pile up clutter or people who are holders, if you look at their personality, we all have different personalities, but one characteristic of a holder or a person who just cannot let go of clutter is indecisiveness. You know, this person who is never decided. So for example, like Faith mentioned, um, you buy a new set of uh, wheels for your car and the others were really worn out. That's why you're buying others in, in the first place and they are changed. But instead of leaving them maybe at the garage, even if you, or, or, or just letting them go at a lower price or just giving them out, you bring them to your garage or whatever space you have in you, in your homes. And I know the men in this forum probably are smiling because you are culprits of this. Actually, men tend to hold more than women, but probably the same levels, but yeah. So, um, you know, you're, you, you, you're thinking, you keep thinking, okay, these tires, I'll probably, I'll start a home gym, so I'm going to use them. Or uh, I can take them to my mom in the village and use them for the donkey cart. You know those donkey carts that are used in the village? You keep telling yourself, this, these wheels, I'm going to actually use them. So you see, you're not able to make a decision. And this is indecisiveness has actually, actually affects a whole aspect of your life, not just on these wheels. If you look at yourself and you critique yourself, you're probably indecisive in most areas of your life. So that indecisiveness is one sign of a clutterer or of a, or a, or of a holder. Simple indecisiveness. So the moment you come to seek help, then we will look at you, you know, we will look at you, at, the, at your history and whether you're able to make decisions and all that. And we will probably find out, okay, so and so X, Y, Z is actually an indecisive person. And this clutter problem could be coming from there. Then we will know how to, de to deal with your indecisiveness. But the moment you're able to make decisions, then you're able to free up a lot of things in your life. You're able to make decisions. You're able to say, okay, I don't need this thing. Let, I'll let it go. I don't uh, uh, need to keep this. I let it go. Then it gives you peace and you're able to move on and your mental space is also is also clear and you're able to make other decisions that are important. Uh, you could also be a holder. I don't know whether Faith mentioned this, but some, some people, um, more often than not, become holders from uh, what I would call, uh, what do I call it? From mourning, there's, there's a word I want to use. For example, when you lose a loved one or even a loved item or it could be a pet, could be a person close to you, could be anything, anything that you love, just as long as you have experienced loss in your life, uh, uh, you find an, an, an unhealthy way of coping by holding on to things that bring you memories of the item that you have lost or of the person that you have lost. Let me give an example of maybe you lose... Um, let's say a parent or a spouse or your brother or a child, more often than not, you will find yourself um, clinging to, for example, clothes because they remind you of that person. And you're coming from a good place. You love the person. And anytime that you see those items, you know, they sort of bring you memories of the person and it's okay. But then ask yourself, is that helping you heal or it's bringing more or it's causing you more harm? Initially, you would think it's a way of just saying, okay, I love this person or I love this pet or I love this item. Why don't I just hold it, you know, for memories? And I'm saying it is okay. But then for how long are you going to hold on to that? 10 years down the line, if it's, for example, clothes that you have held on to, you don't wear those clothes. There are people around you, for, for example, who could be lacking clothes. Why don't you give out these clothes and just tell yourself, um, these clothes have served me memories for the person that I loved, but it's time now I transition them to somebody else and bring closure to yourself. 
just assess yourself and see if there are things that you have you have kept over time because they belonged to somebody that was really close to you and you have you you've been unable to let go the reason you are unable to let go is not because it's just because you have not healed from the trauma of that loss from the experience of that loss and again now that causes you distress causes you sadness causes you you know it just brings issues into your life and the best way to deal with that is to let go of that item just discard them if it helps give them out to somebody who doesn't have and that way you clear you clear yourself you bring closure you bring closure to yourself and you also you know bring clarity to your mental to your mental space you're basically promoting your mental well-being i hope i'm clear on that okay so i have talked about indecisiveness i have talked about uh, holding things because we from loss and you hold on to things because you feel uh they bring you good memories of the person or the things that you have you you lost but again ask yourself six months down the line ten months down the line one year down the line if those things you're not using them of what value are they to you clutter could also bring physical issues like faith mentioned by the time you're getting to level four or five everything is everywhere your kitchen worktops are full of things your bedroom your bed under the bed kila pahali it's just a lot of stuff then what does that mean it could bring injury to you isn't it it could bring injury the space that you're living if it's just cluttered with everything the next thing you're having a fall you've broken your leg that's an injury to you when that injury occurs then you start getting stressed oh i can't go to work because i broke my leg or it's even a serious injury you've broken all your limbs because of clutter now you can't even work the little things you are doing for yourselves you cannot somebody else has to come in and and so just imagine when you you've having a physical illness already that's a stress in itself so you can imagine now this causes even more distress because even the people who will come to help you around they can't even i don't know where they begin it may, it's even difficult to start helping you because everything is everywhere so we need to start developing and i know faith will talk about that we need to start developing simple 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 tips of just getting rid of things that are around us that we are not using or or rather that are not going to be of help to us so faith also mentioned that a uh, you know uh, holding begins in those young young years and that time it's usually because we are observing you know an adults keep stuff around i give an example of how our moms used to have a secluded uh, wall unit that has stuff only for visitors and they could never be used and we also grew up knowing that i need to buy very nice things plates cups whatever that are just for my visitors and how often do you get visitors and nobody else touches those things in your house so yes what i wanted to also mention is that uh, because of this you know um having acquired this stuff over time over time over time and now you reach those levels sometimes you are not able to tell yourself that you're a holder somebody else is the one who will come in pick it up but because we are saying that this could be in itself be a sign of a mental illness you probably have issues you have probably have mental issues that you're not aware of but somebody else you know points it out and you're like and they're like points you to a point of to a direction of going to seek help so what i want to mention is that people shy away from seeking professional help because we think we don't need to speak to somebody but when somebody you know you have you have you're probably thinking of people around you that are holders if not yourself point those people towards the direction of getting help because it could be a bigger problem as i am mentioning we've had people who are committing suicide because they are depressed what is the cause of that depression if you looked at the lives around them could you point out you know unnecessary acquiring of things or not letting go of things as one sign 
that could have led this person to the edge. It all looks very simple, but with time, it becomes something very, very, it becomes the disorder that we're talking about, holding disorder. And you, for, for people around, they look at it and say, ah, this thing is just, I mean, how could it happen? It's very simple. See, you just let go of stuff, but for you, it is a problem. And because I'm saying you may not recognize it, anytime somebody points it out or anytime you point it out to your friend or your relative, and especially back in the village where people also have a very big tendency of keeping things, guide that person towards, towards seeking help for their own for their own good, for their own mental health. Let's not deal with mental issues um, that you could have easily avoided just by doing simple, simple things. So I will allow Faith, maybe I'll come back with, uh, later, but I will allow Faith to just give us tips on how to declutter, just simple tips, how to declutter your space. And it's over the weekend. You can decide tomorrow after church, I will start with just one corner of my house and declutter stuff and decluttering just brings a lot of mental clarity so back to you faith thank you Anne. thank you thank you uh yeah sure i'm going to give you just uh, a few tips however i'm going to be having this uh, another video on uh, decluttering so i'm just to go briefly on uh, what uh how to probably approach simple decluttering because it's simple it's simple you just when you decide to declutter uh i'm going to be answering this question uh also as i answer the questions that have come through uh from some of you so when you decide to declutter just make the decision but don't start like you're decluttering your house and you remove everything in all your house like you put things down and you tell your children we are decluttering we are decluttering so you you know you don't even prepare them first prepare your people tell them there's this exercise that i would want us to undertake and by the way they can be very vital to the exercise just prepare them and tell them even to the to the house girl or probably even your and actually your your partner because you might declutter and your partner will not declutter so unapata you've really done like 50 percent of what you're supposed to be doing so if you would go hand in hand both of you then you're going to achieve the whole thing at once so start decluttering small you can decide it's your master bedroom it's the master bedroom remove clothes from your closet and start there start with your clothes you can even start with your undies I know some of us who have like a hundred plus handies which we do not get to use but we are still wearing it eh? and we have like others 20 of them eh, packed there so start small and then once you, uh, you try and analyze uh, reflect on how probably watch on how you would feel after you declutter just that small space that small space if it's giving you when you get to use your items you're reaching them you know and if it's bringing peace to you just know this is a noble exercise for you and now proceed go to your cosmetics go to your clothes go to your shoes pole 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 and slowly you get there however if you feel that uh, i still have i strongly believe that if you declutter with a professional organizer, it would be easier and simpler for you because they would be understanding the basics and it's easier to let go with an organizer other than with yourself. But if you decide to do it alone, just know that it's not a very exercise, easy exercise to do. So you should be prepared to do it. Otherwise, you might remove all those clothes and put them back again, all of them as they are. Yeah? so always watch out and just be keen on tell yourself ask yourself why am i decluttering for inner peace uh for me to be able to save time when i'm looking for things for me to be able to find my things easily yeah if these these are the reasons as to why you're decluttering then please make sure you declutter and you know very well you're not using that thing 
Faith is asking, clothes for me are a source of hoarding, although well arranged and organized, but not worn for years. Hard to let go, thinking you will wear them at some point. The other and the other culprit is those takeaway plastic. <laughs> yes, because you, you're back for even meat in the supermarket or maybe mm. take away food uh, in the restaurant, wherever. And you feel, I akakachupa ni kazuri, sita katupa. Eh? Ice cream containers. They have become uh, our fridge fridge, fridge uh, containers. Those blue containers and purple. Now, at, at, we are not, even when you put things inside there, fine, they'll help us for some time. But remember, those things are not for reusing. They even are health hazard in your house when you keep on reusing them all the time. Because they are simply take away. They are simply disposable. You mark those words, yeah? And you even go ahead and put it in the microwave. You put it in the, eh? You, 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 you even reheat with it. Guys, I think we are spoiling. Let us watch out for these uh, small, small things. That's how we hoard. Pole, 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 pole. And we become professional hoarders. Or else it becomes a disorder, eh? We... Tunaifanya inakuwa kitu tume, eh, tume perfection, yeah? Blue bad containers on your windows, eh? At they are holding your your sponges for cleaning, kitchen windows. <laughs> those, those things, those things. Yani, whenever you see a blue bad container on a window, just know that's a kitchen. Eh? Kenya, tafadhali, tuache kujipatia titles uh, by default. Let's remove those containers on our windows. So even if you you have your clothes well organized, nicely in layers, and you can be able even to see them, yeah? Just know that as long as you do not use these items, you will not get to, uh, you will not have peace. But can you imagine if you have like 10 tops, and out of those 10 tops, you do wear eight, uh, you wear like five most of the time, you wear like three, once once and two maybe occasionally you feel a lot of because you know you possess what you use and you have its value for your money yeah so the other the tip i can give you and faith and others who are asking about clothes i would say that whenever you pile your clothes like that and you find yourself that within one month you have used uh let me use this side within one month you have you have 20 tops here and within one month you have worn just make sure that you wear them whenever you wear put the top that you wear on top so whenever you wear and you wash put it under okay try and see if the next top that comes is a top that you're going to wear and after some time you'll be able to see if you've not wore if you don't feel like wearing it put it aside and watch and see for how long if it's like one month or two months, it will take you. Within three months, you realize that you've not worn that top. It's time to go. And let's possess baskets or containers labeled clutter in our houses. For your children, just have even one. So anytime you feel this is clutter, you wake up early. Because you'll have it for some time. So within a specific time, a period of time, you will have known whether to donate, yeah? Because you, maybe the urge, you might not remember it. If you remember it and you feel you need it, then go and take and see if you wear it, it will still look good on you and you'll feel good about it and you'll keep wearing it. The other way is putting your hanged clothes. It's called anger strike. Put your clothes like facing uh, on one direction, like they can face you. Of course, ideally you should put them facing away from you but you can put all of them facing you this side yeah for those clothes you wear and wash and iron make sure you change the direction of the hanger so if for like three months there will be still other hangers facing you then know that this is the time to get rid of these things that is another way of getting rid of stuff or uh, getting to know but you know, this is for people, this is for another level. So if you're at a level of where even you cannot even see those things, then know your, 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 your problem has to be solved in a different manner. 
and then uh, there's somebody who asked me about uh, how to get rid of uh, stuff that she has in the shop. Like I said, you can hoard uh, stuff in your uh, shops. Uh, let me say that, uh, just check, uh, try and monitor your stock. What items move more? What items do not, what items are not moving? Then you will be able to know that I should not add specific things to my uh, list of uh, stock that I need to be selling in, in your inventory. So with time, then you will have known what is not moving. Now for those things that are not moving, try and do a sale. You might have bought those things expensively and it's very hard to do a sale. At Okisemani 50%, unapata, you've not even gotten the sale, the buying price because they were so expensive. Yeah? You close your eyes and you say, now, this is dead stock. Yeah? Because even if you have them there, they are not, you will not recover what you bought. Yeah? So you can just do a sale. Like, tell people, buy one, get one free. And by the way, that's a reason for most of us hoarding. Hoarders, just check and see what the things that you, you get something on sale, buy one, get one free. You buy it, even two or three, and be given another three. Where are you taking? Unapeleka wapi? If you have a friend, maybe you're buying so they can take, then that's okay. Make sure when you're doing a sale, you're very, very, very informed and you know where you're taking those things. If it's not for consumption and it's not a, it's not necessary, if, if it's not helping you, it's not necessary. You go and find someone says, if you buy one, you buy at 400. But if you buy six, you buy at 200. Hey, give me six. Where are you taking six? Just because it's at 200. And you just need one. Eh? And you go, you find, you will find yourself, you go home, you have six, you keep. You need one, you've used one. You keep the six. You keep the five. And you keep them for such a long time just because they were on offer. Watch out for those sales. Watch out for those sales. Buy if you need it. You know, there are those things I say, if Woolworths is, uh, has put a sale, this is the time I'll go looking for something that I've always wanted perfect that is very 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 good and that's what people do with thrift the other thing that faith you can do is to thrift those like take them to shops whereby people thrift like frequently nowadays there are people buying uh things on for thrift and then uh, you can also close your eyes and donate just go to a children's home it will be a blessing for you and give them out yeah what too now you will be surprised at the blessings that you receive yeah because you're keeping those things especially in your houses watch out and there's somebody somewhere who is very needy of those things that you're keeping and that you're not using even god is not happy with us yeah so i hope i have answered um i have let me see let me see this is a question here i have lots of paper clutter i'm always thinking this could be important when needed yeah now paper clutter paper 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 we can accumulate it for so long especially receipts i'll give you a tip for receipts get a container every time you do shopping put those receipts there and just some few days to for those who file returns some few days to returns go through your receipts and uh, take what you need to, to use for filing of returns and what you do not need. As long as it's not um, a warranty receipt, then you don't need to keep it. Unless probably it's something that you've bought and you're told a uh, return within a month. If it's faulty, then you need to keep for that time. So it's good to have a filing system whereby you keep those things that you need to await for for use maybe at a later date if it's a warranty receipt if it's an insurance receipt whether maybe you made a deposit if it's a deposit a bank deposit yeah so just keep them for some time depending on what it is and then the rest of the things please just trash it 
and the other thing that uh, the other thing that i might say maybe like uh, your filing try and have a system a good filing system it will help you reduce on clutter because it's very hard to file something that you do not need because your files will just jar and fill up and fill up if it's for the kids just try and have one file for a, for one kid file uh and like nowadays i'm seeing schools are improving they, they are, the kids are bringing in portfolios for every year yeah so see you to petu vitabu basi and keep the portfolio yeah if it is uh, academics, just have a, a file for your kids and file their report cards in one file and then trash the rest of the things. Let's not keep unnecessary items because these levels, the level of hoarding is going high and up the ladder. Let's avoid getting to a point of needing help or uh, a professional help because it's easier managed when it's down here other than when it escalates. I hope I have answered your questions, guys. And uh, for those that still have, kindly keep them coming. We'll answer them slowly. I can also answer them uh, as a message. You can also, if you don't want to put your questions across here, you can chat me privately and I'll be able to respond. I, uh, However, I want to address uh, one thing, especially about our parents. When you're approaching them, because I know you've already started noticing that your parents are holders of specific things. Please, Msi Waende na Fujo na force at they need to declutter. Those people have those things passionate in their hearts. They really value those things. So when you want them to declutter, take them slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly. And for those uh, old people I have been able to take through this exercise, I sit with them in a session of one or two. First of all, it's very hard for them to agree to an, an external person to come and enter their personal space and start taking out their personal things. So if you have parents who are hoarders, Musiwaende Nafujo, just go slowly and st one step at a time. I've been able to take through some parents through that exercise and it has been a very successful one. In fact, I do at least two sessions uh, before, two sessions before we start the exercise so that they are able to familiarize themselves with me and be able to be comfortable when I handle their personal stuff. So uh, let, don't, don't, don't bang them, don't, don't, don't even tell them they, they are doing the wrong thing. No, 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 no. You will head in the wrong direction. You might even be told, uh, don't try. Don't try that at home. However, it is possible for them to get out of that situation. But slowly, slowly, slowly. And uh, let us embrace, let us embrace thoughtful shopping because that is what leads us into having clutter and completely leads us into becoming hoarders. Let us, guys, uh, embrace uh, decluttering as an exercise in our homes, a continuous exercise. The way you decide I'm doing holidays every year, can you put also decluttering as part of the things that you do in your houses? And then let us, uh, like I said, watch my 10 habits into maintaining an organized home. I have tackled all those uh, things. Try and keep your spaces and uh, countertops and beds, you know, living spaces, spaces that you need to access to. Let us keep them free of items because the moment we start putting those things there, we never get to remove them from there. So make it an habit, pole pole. If it's a flower pot, watch a kwetunika flower pot. Watch a kueka na kueka. Handbag, today you've used this one. The next time you're using another one, you rem you take it from there and you leave it there. So guys, it's possible. It's possible to have an organized home. It's possible to have order in your homes. It's possible to maintain an organized home because it's one thing to have it organized and it's another thing to maintain it. So if you really need, if you need our help, uh, don't forget to reach out to us. We'll take you through that process and I'll be able to analyze and tell what level you are in, uh, in uh, hoarding. If you're a hoarder or if you're just completely disorderly or probably 
you are just messy yeah so it's easy to tell that and uh, we'll be able to give you the best way forward if i realize this is a disorder then i do not handle that particular uh, uh, situation uh, case i forward it to another level somebody like Anne. Anne is a clinical psychologist and she's capable of dealing with such issues and at the point they feel they've taken the client through um through that uh, process of realizing and recognizing who they are and what the issues what problems or issues are affecting them then uh, they can forward the people the, the the cases to me when now we need solutions yeah because you cannot take through a person through such an exercise and now take them back to the spaces that uh you know are cluttered and full of items so let us uh, follow the steps and let us help our loved ones and uh, we'll we'll be able to um to to get out to get out of this uh, uh, situation we'll live we'll have our homes organized and looking nice you know there's nothing good to enter our home and you do not step on a toy have you experienced that yeah you enter your home at the door unakutana na toys my friend yeah you can imagine it is you know we don't go home and there are those who do not look forward even to going home because their houses are cluttered their houses are filled up but they do not know why they don't feel like going home i do not go home just to see my children or probably to sleep no i go home because there is a lot of peace there yeah i'm able to do my things i get motivated to do my stuff because i can find things easily so it's time it's a wake-up call so let's embrace it and move on with it otherwise guys i'm so happy to having you here unless anna has something to tell us or to close uh for us then uh uh <laughs> let, let me hear yeah she has something okay uh, just uh, some final remarks, eh? because we have now begun understanding what clutter and what holding is all about. As we go, I want us to ask ourselves a few questions. Anytime you want to declutter and you feel like I don't want to let go of this item, first of all, ask yourself, when did I last use it? When did you last use that item? That's question number one. The next question, and you will answer yourself, I probably used it six months ago, you know, 12 months ago. And if it's anything that is above six months, then just seriously let go of it. Because you're not, if you've not used an item for six months, even in the next coming month, you're not going to use it. Ask yourself, of what value is this item bringing to me? What value is it bringing to me at this, at this moment in time? Is it adding any value? If yes, then you can consider keeping it and keeping it, you know, you know, properly. But if the answer is it's not bringing you any value, then that just tells you let go of it. So question number one, when did I last use this item? If anything above six months, just let go. Of what value is it bringing to me? If it's not bringing any value, if it doesn't, if it's not adding any value in your daily life, then that is clutter. Let it, let it go. So that, those are my two, those are the two questions that I want us to ask ourselves even as we go. Okay, thank you, Anne. Uh, yeah, that is very really important. And actually, I think I've mentioned that in my 10 habits of maintaining an organized home. And um, I still insist for you to watch that video because it's going to enlighten you more. And uh, also the other thing that, um, I'll tell you is that try and live small. I'm not saying you be a minimalist, but I'm just saying try and live within the things that you are able to work around with because sometimes we waste a lot of money with doing so much. Uh, and to be able to do this, I have um, a tip to give you, to leave you with, uh, think about it. If it's clothes that have become a disaster, if it's handbags, if it's shoes, if it's books, just tell yourself, this is the space I have. This is the space I have. 
I do not have any other space. This is where I keep my tops. If I cannot keep one more top or the moment even in my hanger or probably uh, where I'm folding them, I realize I don't have another space to add other items, then it is time. If you can't add four, it is time to let go four. Remove four and add four. Okay? And you will be able to remain with just what you need. Stop putting your tops here and your skirts there. Keep your things at uh, one place so that you're able to see them all and you're able to use them all. And you'll be able to know what you're not using and what you're using more. And the other thing is I want you guys to ask yourself, stop saying that my house is small. Today, stop saying my house is small. You don't have a small house. You have enough. You have excess things. Even if you are in a one bedroom and you went to a three bedroom, it will not fit you. So if you can't manage a one bedroom, a three bedroom will be chaos. Your space is, your where you are, it's enough. The only problem is that you have unnecessary excess things. And that is what I'm going to leave with you today. Um, I hope this discussion has helped you. Please make sure you share the video. We are going to save the video in our YouTube channel. So make sure you save it, you share it to your friends and acquaintances so they can be able also to get help. Uh, they, they, if, if, especially if it has helped you. And um, also, uh, if, if maybe you want some sessions, with, if you know you are at that level that you need some sessions, kindly reach out to Anne. I'm going to be putting her details and contacts uh, under the, my description box. So you'll be able to find her and reach out to her directly without having to go through somebody else. And uh, with that, guys, I'm happy. It's been an evening and a half. We have exited this video, but I am happy that everything has come out and even from you. Otherwise, I'm so happy. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and uh, hit the subscription uh, uh, subscription, and also hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time we upload a new video. Follow us also on Instagram and uh, also on Facebook. We're also on LinkedIn and Pinterest and also, uh, in fact, all social platforms. So I'm happy to having you. And thank you for having me. Thank you, Anne, for agreeing to come through to this session. I believe I'll be needing you again. So when I call upon you, please uh, feel much invited. And let's do this. Let's let's do this. Thank you so much. Keep those comments coming. Uh, otherwise, it's a bye and a lovely evening from me. I'm going to be ending this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Faith. Faith Asante Sana. I'm happy to hear that. Asanteni, Asanteni. Asante Kamar. Thank you, Doris. This talk is such an eye opener for me. Yes, please. And let us monitor our children, like I said, because they'll be the next orders. They'll be the next orders. Uh, Faith says, I'm becoming self-aware from this. I'm your person of get four for 600. I feel me mocha and true. As Anne said, instead of the accumulation making me happy, I get more sad. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens. And then, uh, six months later, that's when you find the other three items. And you wonder, when did I buy this? Did I really have this? Hmm? Embrace thoughtful shopping. Hmm. Yeah, so guys, um, thank you so much. 
and um, thanks for sharing the tips. That's Linda, Santi Sana Linda, for coming to this session. It was uh, amazing having you here. Otherwise, without you, it would not have been happening. So thank you. Thank you. Let's transform those homes. Let our selves, when we walk out there looking nice and all good and all beautiful, let people see our houses in us. You know, ukiangalia hivi na imagine kai kama ako hivi nyumba yake iko aje. You know, simple. Simple. Let's not look good but back at home to we even we don't want even today are going back there. Otherwise, I'm happy to having you and I'll be ending this live. Until next time, it's a bye-bye. Good night. Good night.